Good evening. Uh, welcome uh, to the Broom Gallery and to the opening of the, this exhibition, which has a very long title. Um, I'm Irina Costanti. I'm the coordinator of the exhibitions in this gallery. I'm also a professor of art history. It's my yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bob has the office right across from mine, so. Uh. Um, she brings so, all the time. <laughs> thank you all very much for coming. Uh, this is an exhibition that I really enjoy working on. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dan and Cos for contributing. Uh, this is not really purely an art exhibition. I think it's, it speaks very well about our mission, um, about what we do on this campus. We interact, faculty, students, disciplines, and the show represents really what we do, and I think both a very beautiful but a very thoughtful way as well. And I would like to, to introduce Dan, and he will have some words, and then Cos and other speakers. So thank you again for coming, and enjoy the show. Welcome. Um, my name is Dan Wakeley. I'm the Associate Provost. Um, and I've had the opportunity to be involved in a lot of things over the, the life of this campus, but this is one that is of, of particular uh, interest to me and, and that I've had a, 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 a wonderful time uh, watching develop uh, our, our research station on, on, Chen, on Santa Rosa Island. Uh, I've been on the campus quite a while. And uh, I can remember, some of you may have had similar experiences, but uh, I remember distinctly when Aliso Hall was being planned and built, uh, talking to one of our vendors who's, and about pricing, and he said, well, we don't deliver to the Channel Islands. I can only give you pricing to the Port of Los Angeles. <laughs> but many of us have had questions about which island that we're on, and now uh, we can actually tell people that we're on Santa Rosa. <laughs> But, but this, to me, our, our efforts on Santa Rosa really epitomize many of the things that make Channel Islands special. Um, that they give us an opportunity to bring people across the campus together. Uh, what we're doing on Santa Rosa certainly is, is the work of faculty and students, uh, but it wouldn't happen without the work of our facilities people and a whole range of people uh, on our campus who, who came together uh, to, to, do, to, to bring this off uh, in a way that has amazed uh, people in the Park Service, who, who are our partners there, who, who didn't expect to see us uh, develop this quickly or have this much activity, uh, or to benefit from the kinds of things that uh, are going on uh, by our students and faculty. This represents a, sort of an inter the interdisciplinary nature of our campus. Uh, Certainly we have our biologists, our environmental scientists, our anthropologists, but as you see around the room, uh, we have art students, sociology students, a whole range of people uh, from different academic programs, uh, different co-curricular programs, um, engaged in research, service to the park. Much of, much of the work that's going on there uh, is a great research experience for students, but also helps the park better understand its resources and manage them by collecting data about them. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this exhibit, about our work on Santa Rosa. Uh, I'm glad that you all were able to join us. Um, and, and I want to thank, uh, we have uh, several people who, who have helped uh, particularly cause, uh, first of all, who, who has just uh, done great work uh, bringing, bringing this uh, station from an idea to, uh, to reality. Um, our provost, who's, who's been very supportive in terms of resources, with several uh, guests who, who have helped to support us, uh, including the Habasi family, who you'll hear from in a little, a little while. But uh, I just want to thank you for being here, and uh, hope that you enjoy the show. And with that, I'll turn it over to Cos. All right, apologize for the paper. No, it's for a tele teleprompter, notes. but it didn't show up. Um, well, thanks, Dan, and thanks, um, Irina, for organizing the show. I mean, this has been a lot of hard work. I don't know, it's hard to organize students, but faculty members are that much better. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, you know, like that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult to wrangle faculty members together. So the fact that you pulled so many together is pretty phenomenal. Thank you. Um, 
I kind of want to discuss like the core idea of the research station. And a big thing for me, and what epitomizes the research station, is the sense of self-discovery and scientific discovery. And so I really like to use that word discovery when it comes to the research station. Um, it's really the core of the station's mission, and it really brings together both the research and education components of the research station. Um, so I hope that you know it has garnered and nurtured discovery in students and in researchers, and I hope it will continue to into the distant future. And what really kind of creates this, uh, this opportunity for both scientific and self-discovery is a sense of place, and a sense of community that the island and the, and the, the research station really breeds. Um, and so you can imagine, you know, like it's a two and a half hour boat ride to Santa Rosa Island. And who's been to, on that boat ride? Anybody know? So quite a few people. Phenomenal boat ride. Um, and what's so spectacular is that it's two and a half hours away from one of the most populated areas in the world, the LA Basin, 18 million people. And just two and a half hours away, you're transported magically to an isolated world, a world that mimics 19th century California. And just that feel alone and the isolation of the island breeds a sense of community and, and a sense of self-discovery. Um, so students, faculty members, researchers, for the first time in years or the first time ever, have an ability to disconnect. And I've seen this in lots of students that we've been working with. Their capacity to all of a sudden, their phone doesn't work, the internet doesn't work, <laughs> they look at each other like, man, I gotta talk to you, you know? And at first there's this kind of freak out session, but it really allows them to internalize it and, and reflect themselves on that sense of place and really come together, to, you know, and basically sit at the kitchen table and just talk to each other. Um, so as a result, there's this connection. And so visitors, when they come out to island, one of the first things we do is we talk about the natural and cultural resource history. And there's a phenomenal natural history. We start 20 million years and we go through a 20 million year history within about 10 minutes. So it's rapid. <laughs> and then we talk about the human history and there's a, a vast human history out there, at least 13,000 years, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure it's more than that. And so really they get all these layers of place. The land that they inhabit, what does this land mean to them? Where has this land been and where is this land going? Then they interact with the land and contribute to it. So most of our students who go out there are doing a service learning project, learning about it and informing future management, whether it's cultural, natural management or art, et cetera. And there's so many times that students afterwards, they say, man, I can't wait to come back 20 years from now with my family and see how this island changed. And so you can see the sense of place transfers from the past to the present and deep into the future. And they really hold on to that, whether they've been there two days or whether they've been there three weeks. And so it's my hope that this sense of place goes with them to wherever landscape that they inhabit. Another phenomenal thing I think about the research station that we want to promote is the idea of sustainable ethics. And so when you go to the research station, one of the first questions I ask the students is, do you know where your water comes from? Do you know where your electricity comes from? And do you know where your waste goes? You know, we just turn our faucet on and it magically appears, and we're like, oh, that's nice, there's water. That's cool. awesome. You know, we turn, we flip the light, and we're like, this is amazing. And we flush the toilet, and we're like, see ya. You know, go to your magic place, I never want to see you again. But the research station, we can point directly to where. This is where the well is. This is where the solar panels are. This is where the leach field is. It turns out your poop gets ground up and gets ejected upwards, and this is the leach field. And so we have to give those gruesome details. But we hope that that connection, that sustainability ethic, brings them back to the mainland, and they start asking those questions. They don't just start assuming and take it, taking for you know, granted the water that comes out of their faucet. So in regards to self-discovery, I think it's th these opportunities, this idea of connection to place and community that breeds the sense of self-discovery. Um, and it gives the, uh, the students an opportunity to reflect, really be stripped down to the basics and reflect, well, what's essential to my happiness and what's essential to our future as a, as a civilization. And the, the ability to remove students from their everyday lives and create these really first opportunities or these special experiences kind of, kind of rocks them a little bit. You know, you can see students get a little bit uncomfortable. And for the first time, students are on a boat. For the first time, students see whales and dolphins. For the first time, students see the Milky Way. For the first time, students are camping. For the first time, students are going for a hike. And it's all these things that all of a sudden break them free of their bubble, and they start all of a sudden having this connection to place. And it's this multiple dimensional idea um, and identity of place that allows them to have this kind of multidimensional idea and discovery of self. And so those connections are really important for this island. Lastly, I just want to mention the scientific discovery. 
And so as the scientific discovery goes forward, a huge piece for the research station is, well, how do we contribute? What's going on out there? So how can we inform scientific, both natural cultural resource management into the future and help the park? And what's been really neat out there is this interdisciplinary collaborations. And a lot of that happens at the dinner table or it happens with researchers bumping shoulders in the kitchen. And it happens with talking on campus about possible interdisciplinary ideas to do on the island. And that's transformed into a lot of projects out on the island. And some of which um, have been 25 different capstone students working this year on the island alone from business, sociology, anthropology, biology, and environmental science. And those projects you know, offer a real diverse spread of what that land means, whether it's stream restoration, geomorphology, shoreline change to the future, um, water quality, vegetation change, intertidal ecology, historic archaeology, um, business processes and protocols, or student surveys and seeing changes in uh, behaviors and perceptions. And so it's really nice to kind of see all these come together, and all of a sudden you have a sociology student, and a business student, and an environmental science student, and a biology and anthro student sitting at the same table discussing their projects. And man, they really start seeing different, different viewpoints and different perspectives. And it's all being projected onto the same place. And so as a wrap up, I just want to say that this creation of the research station ideally you know, will be into the distant future. And this art show really encapsulates that idea. Uh, and, I, and I really thank you for that. Um, and the research station wouldn't be around except for the collaboration between the university and the National Park Service and dedicated faculty and staff like Dan mentioned, um, many of whom are here, and the phenomenal students that we have out there. Um, so I want to thank you all. Um, and lastly, um, the student, a lot of these student projects and researchers have been solely funded by um, one university, but then two private donors. So the Havasi Foundation has been a really generous supporter, and Keith Westcott and Jan, I'm not sure, in the back down there, have been really great community supporters. So if, you're, if students are here that have been supported, please go to them and thank them for the opportunity to go out to this island. So appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoy the show. Thank you.